friends, denizens of the internet, hello and welcome back to another exciting episode over here at Lost Time Gaming. Today we are checking out something called Scrutinized. Now, if you aren't familiar with this game, this game is very much in the game in the vein of certain other games, namely um, Welcome to the Game and, and its sequel. Um, and if you've never heard of Welcome to the Game, uh, suffice to say, you do things on a computer and scary stuff occurs. Now, this is one of those games that I'd always kind of considered to maybe do for a Halloween thing, but these games are pretty difficult in the scope of things. Not like that they require extreme amounts of effort, but you can basically lose the game at the blink of an eye and have to restart the whole thing, and and that's not what I'm really trying to do during a, a Halloween event. So what I'm going to do right now is we're just going to get into this. We're going to play normal because casual is pointless because they in, uh, in gave a difficulty to where you just can't lose i believe when she was a kid luna aspired to be a superhero not the ones in skin tight suits that could fly but the ones that identified connections where others didn't she wanted x-ray vision to observe criminals when they tried to hide from the law and supersonic hearing to listen in on mischievous talks then a measure of heightened strength to restrain the guys bigger than her. This was all she craved when she was a child. As she became older, her ambitions took a more realistic approach, which seemed in direct opposition to the surreal tone the news took. The facts became the new dystopian fiction. The world grew louder each year, apparently more violent or more visible than the year before. Her generation grew up looking to cull the increasingly violent trends that saw mass incarcerations, drug wars, and serial killers studying to gain notoriety. Luna took the analytical route in her quest for justice, feeling more at home processing case files, evidence, and connecting dots. Her cousin, a sister almost, enrolled in the academy and became an officer of the law. Even extended family, no matter how far away, seemed to gravitate towards law enforcement. Almost as if it were in their blood. A murderer becomes a serial killer with just two more kills. A co-worker informed her over scones and coffee one morning. This one had three total that day. But that number hit double digits soon enough. Accumulating corpses of officers, criminal lawyers, and several field investigators to a growing pile of victims. The news on TV, becoming more unreal as the years ticked on by, ran the Blue Blood Killer story 24-7. Luna knew about the local serial killer, more so than most thanks to all the overtime spent processing corroborative evidence for their many crimes. However, it still felt more like gossip and fabricated plot points. At least, until that phone call made something so artificial an actuality. The call came in the middle of the night, as unexpected as a bullet in the dark. Her cousin, the exemplar of a police officer, had been killed. It was just the tragically common traffic stop gone wrong, or armed robber with a weighted pistol. Maybe Luna could have mourned and pushed on, but it wasn't any run-of-the-mill incident that was so characteristic of headlines. No. It wasn't that because life had long turned into a phantasmagoric nightmare. Officer Sarah Youngman, revered by all that mattered, died at the hands of the Blue Blood Killer. Who he was, or who they were, remained an enigma despite their murder spree eroding through states, counties, and homes. But more than the long list of confirmed victims and possible connections Luna herself had registered and slept away, this monster killed Sarah. Somehow, that turned the boogeyman into a living, breathing threat. No longer was this tyrant a thing she filed at the end of the day. It wasn't an obsession of the media. He was here, and if not in the literal sense, then definitely in her mind. This realization gnawed at her for months after the real morning faded. Luna's acceptance stage barely registered before she fell swiftly to anger once again. And it never genuinely went away. Luna craved a name. She wanted to know who killed the sweetest woman in the world despite so-called dirty cops walking free. Luna needed justice. 
What was it about her cousin that triggered this killer in the first place? Could it be that she stood for everything a cop should be? A perfect example of morality, protectiveness, mentality, and heart? Officer Youngman was everything demanded in the ones that protected them, and Luna wouldn't allow her memory to fade away as another statistic. Day in and day out, she spent the connections she'd built up through work and rowdy Christmas parties to see if there was something no one else saw. Cop friends that never steered her wrong came up empty-handed. Family members with careers linked closer to the real action knew little else than the papers. Even the old-timers that knew things few else did all but shrugged when she pressed them for clues. She needed leads first, but there were none. So, in a last-ditch effort, she resolved to chew her boss for leeway. Luna did all she could for any little morsel of information regardless of the fallout. Being an investigations analyst for the district attorney's office had its perks, but it only teased her for all the good it did with building an idea of who this killer was. Her boss knew what she was after, but he followed the rules as strictly as Luna did. Being shut down by him just meant there was one less layer between a law-abiding citizen and vigilante justice. With each denied application for information outside her classification, Luna saw the justice system's holes appear and broaden. Sometimes the law hindered what mattered. Progress couldn't always continue behind red tape and protocol. Perhaps, in cases like these, rules were meant to be budged. Maybe she couldn't talk her way into databases and case folders. Maybe it wasn't so easy as to read reports on other victims hoping a eureka moment hit her. If she were going to make any change, it had to start with her, with citizens willing to help. Yes, Luna respected the law, and she would uphold it as Sarah would have wanted, but she couldn't stand idly by any longer. One morning, she called in sick, made flyers, and pinned them around town. She started a neighborhood watch that day, and by the next day at work, Luna couldn't think of anything else. It started with one report then two, then three and four, and more. Before she realized what was happening, her small network of retired cops and nosy neighbors had become a full-on crime watch program that spanned beyond the neighborhood, the suburbs, and into town. At times, the number of reports felt too much for one person, but for the hundreds of thousands of people less prepared for human horrors as Sarah was, Luna felt that a couple of sleepless nights was the least she could do. Luna had to get her answers somehow. Oh, oh, that's it? Cool. Wow, that that was a lot to drink in there. Uh, just, just a whole bunch. Just ignore that tip on the top that says, don't like chum scares, turn them off in the options menu. I'm sure that's perfectly fine. Nothing to see there. So, what we're doing is obviously pretty clear, uh, if you were following that intro at all. We're trying to find our cousin's killer, who may or may not be a serial killer. Uh, it was kind of vague about that, but we, we are definitely trying to find her killer. That being said, we do this via computer. I should get to my computer and get the night started. Yes. Now, we start in a real place with the light switches and... Oh yes, turn the lights off. Totally normal thing that people do while standing in the room. Open the door and we go down the hall. Lovely plain chain artwork. Yes, that is that is a very graphically correct representation of Saturn. Very good. Everything seems cool in here. How about out here? Everything cool? Everything looks cool. Oh, yeah. I need to read that email and check out those bolos. Check out those bolos? I don't I don't know what that is, but okay, let's read a wait. Email? The email This Uh Lights turning off and power trips. From Luna to contact at above and beyond electrician. Hey, lights around my home are randomly turning off without me touching any of the switches. Also if I leave my security camera light on too long, the breaker trips. I'd like a quote in your soonest possible opening to get this mess sorted. Thank you. 
And the reply, hello Luna, I am super busy the next few weeks. In the meantime, I suggest flicking the light switches on and off a few times to get them to turn on. There's probably a short slash loose wiring that's been causing the lights to turn off. For the camera light, limit your use to shorter bursts to avoid flipping the breaker. Sounds like it's drawing more power than your breaker was rated for. The diagnosis above are just assumptions, and at this point I can't give you a quote unfortunately without first coming to your home. If you still want to schedule an appointment, my first open slot is early next month. So, to summarize, the lights are randomly turning off, and uh, the camera light, using the camera light on the security cam too long, uses or causes the breaker to trip. So that's that's bad. Keep those in mind. And Bolo, here we go. Last night, I thought I heard something outside my house, so I promptly checked my security camera to see what it was and saw a strange man creeping around. Unsure of what this person was doing snooping around outside, I shined the camera light on them to get a better look at who it was. After clearly being caught, he ran off, but after checking the footage a couple of times, his face seemed so familiar. It dawned on me after the fact that he matched the description of the man police were after for a murder. It's our duty as members of the Watch to keep the community safe and aware of what's going on. I recommend everyone shares this message to monitor your cameras, and if available, use your camera lights to deter any suspicious persons away from your property. Okay, so, creepy dude wearing a suit and tie, I guess. You know, that's good, just kind of hanging out in people's yards, totally normal thing to do. Okay, this, uh, this guy's not wearing a suit and tie. As of today, we've notified the agency about a potential suspect we believe is involved in a sex trafficking ring. Our suspicion comes from the disappearance of a member of female number of female victims and eyewitness account of one woman who was able to escape. We know that the man operates alone and at night specifically. He's around six feet tall, bald, white, medium build, and has a forearm tattoo. We'd like to stress this message specifically to the woman, uh, to the women, as you could in fact be his next target. Based on the track record, it seems as if he's looking to kidnap women exclusively. It's also come to my attention that the builder who developed many of the homes in this area cut some corners. Many of the reports point to a compromised window locking mechanism as the culprit behind the unwanted entries. Security is key here. Leave your lights on and ensure your windows are locked. Locked windows, huh? Oh, okay. Well, we should probably, should probably do that. Uh, nope, that's 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 not uh that's not locked at all. No, I can't I can't lock that. Apparently, that's just. Oh, that was that one was open. That was not even closed. Okay. Oh, I can't run. That's always bad. Sounds like you're open as well. Close you. And now you seem you seem closed. Nobody hanging outside out there. So basically, what we're trying to do is uh, bleh, I don't like that at all. While we're trying to solve our cousin's murder. We are also, that's open as well, we are also trying to not get kidnapped by a person involved in the slave trade, the sex slave trade, and we are also trying to avoid creepy guy hanging out in the yard. That's great. Let's check in the house real quick. Oh, here is a, a router and... A modem, I assume. That's fun. Oh yeah, I guess if we're going to be tripping the breaker on and off, should probably figure out where that is. Why are all these windows wide open? Who does that? You know, I grew up in the woods. And uh, even if you wanted to, you really never leave your windows open because, like, the bugs get in. So... To see all these windows open with somebody that, like, lives in the suburbs, I assume, from the looks of it. Eh, no breaker. Oh, there's the breaker. Cool. You know, you just you just don't leave your windows open like that. Can I interact with any of this stuff? No? Hmm? So, uh, again, I've been wanting to do this game for a while, but haven't really had the time or the opportunity. Mostly because this is a game that terrifies the crap out of me. It's not inherently scary in a supernatural or monster kind of way. It's terrifying because you're just sitting at your computer doing stuff, trying to solve a murder, and uh, there's people around trying to kill you. Let's check out the security cam. Oh, I was, okay. Yep, looks, uh, looks clear in air. 
Now, there's a certain thing we have to do here. Oh, that's right. I haven't. I, I played this a little bit on my own, but like this is one of those games I end up just hitting Alt F4 after a while because I don't. Uh, I can't handle it. But we're supposed to go through reports and kind of analyze them and file them where they need to be. So we have a suspicious person report, Edmund Araliano. I heard some odd animal noises coming out of my neighbor's house last night. Naturally, he's a pretty quiet guy, keeps to himself, but it offers neighborly pleasantries in passing. I know he has a dog, but sounds coming out of his house didn't match what I think a dog would make. After about an hour, I saw him bring the dog outside to go to the bathroom, and it had a noticeable limp. The dog laid down in the backyard and wouldn't get up like it didn't want to go back inside. He shouted for the dog to come back in the house, and ended up having to pick it up to get it inside. Okay, well, um... This is where we start using unscrupulous methods to figure out who this person is and whether or not they may be doing shady stuff. Now, all of this is obviously... I, I like how the, the main character that we're playing as suggested that we were going to stay within the bounds of the law that the cousin loved so much. But, like, we're kind of not doing that now. All right, so this Edmund Arlano has no... Uh, social media presence, which, like, yeah, okay, maybe. Let's try... Let's try that. Maybe it's an alias. No, it's not an alias. Okay. He's a male with black hair and 607. Okay, so that's, that's not really gonna... We're gonna go ahead and just... Yeah, can I, can I get rid of this? There we go. Let's just shred that because that's just somebody who's a dog didn't appreciate their presence and I'm sure there's a lot of those David Garvey okay let's clear these out David Garvey let's get that rolling while we read this no results found unfortunate uh, I happened to run into Mr. Garvey today while walking in the woods. We spoke briefly, and for some reason he was covered in blood. It looked so scary I can't describe it. He explained to me that he had just shot a deer. He described the deer as a big, fat, ugly bitch who, according to him, couldn't even run from obesity. I know that he just lost his hunting license a few months ago, but I was just too afraid to ask. And he had this funny look in his eyes. Nobody knows much about him, and all this just won't let me go. I was never very good at describing what is wrong with people, but believe me when I say there's something wrong with this person. Okay. Oh, I forgot this is something else we could do. We could put the people's uh, age and height and weight and stuff in here and we can get something of a more accurate search. 50 to 60. There's an ominous drone in my ears going on as well, which is uh, unfortunate because it makes me very apprehensive. Let's see hair color gray eye color green don't have a weight or a height that's unfortunate let's see what we can get here Brandon Williams yeah that's a car doesn't really help me no aliases so that's probably not that person I mean how else would you know um, we have all these methods with which to kind of search for people. Now, obviously, I'm not paying attention to the cameras. I'm kind of keeping my ears open, but apart from that, spent $9 at Civilian's Defense and gasoline, Theodore's finest cigarettes, so we can look at what he picked up, pack of lighters, pack of condoms, and 50 22 long rifle bullets for the hunting rifles. Okay. So he definitely bought ammo recently, but that's not really indicative of anything terrible. Hmm. Let's see if we get anything here with a David Garvey. Oh, here we go. Suspect, David Garvey, Hoover Street. A 911 call dispatched myself, Officer Sloan, and Officer Adams from Mr. Garvey's house on suspicion that he was holding and torturing a neighborhood dog. When we entered the suspect's home, he confessed to eating the dog and burying the remaining carcass in the garden with an old suitcase. 
The only reason he gave was I want to try everything once and wanted us to know that he had treated the animal well and gave it a quick death before eating it. The owner is going through with compensation charges and the county has gone through with the charges of animal abuse, animal torture, and the illegal slaughter of an animal for purposes of consumption or trade. Okay, so, uh, Mr. I murdered a dog just to eat it and you try everything once. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Uh, we'll put that in the evidence tab. Very good. <sighs> oh. Damn it. Internet went out again. What? I need to go reset the router in the back room closet. Ah, oh, crap. That's unfortunate. Oh, and the lights in the kitchen are out. That's unfortunate as well. I'm definitely not extremely anxious right now at all. You're anxious. <laughs> I hate you painting. You are you are terrible. Yes, reboot the router. Yes. Wait for the flashing lights. I can't move my mouse. Okay, lights. Good. Lights are on. Okay, cool. Apparently that's all we need to do. Is it just me or did it sound like the window was open in here? No, it's closed. Okay. Okay, just totally normal router just randomly shutting off for no reason. It's a thing that happens uh, all over the place, lots of the time. Windows are still shut good. Now, as you can probably guess, this is uh, this is kind of the build or the play of the game is to... You're doing basically like a freelance vigilante uh, detective stuff. So what you're doing is focusing on this while all kinds of bad things are making their way around town outside. Now again, there is a way to play this with uh, no people trying to murder you or kidnap you into the uh, slave trade. Or the sex slave trade, I'm sorry. But what's the fun in that? And that uh, kind of leads me back to I want to oh jeez um no I don't, I don't know what I'm doing what was that <laughs> this leads me back to the fact that, like there's a reason I don't like play this that often or I haven't done it for the channel yet because I'm not really oh it's just errored out now that's just that's gone forever okay cool <laughs> Hmm. So I'm kind of at a loss as what to do now. I feel like this guy walking out of the woods yelling things about a deer, which are obviously not a deer, probably not good. Is it indicative of him being a murderer, though? I mean, that's not how being a murderer works. You don't, I mean... Yeah, it's extremely suspicious, but you got to figure we're kind of existing in the realm as a, of vigilantism, so... Oh, what was that? What was that? There was a... Well... That, uh, that's gonna scar me for life. <laughs> I, whew. So, I missed something. I don't know if maybe there was a window open and I just didn't see it. Or maybe it was the fact that the... The light was off in the kitchen for too long. Like, how long have that been off? Who knows? But that's kind of how easily you lose these games. And as you can see, continue is grayed out here. There's no... There's no, like, checkpoint I hit where I can continue from. Now, obviously, there is a continue option, so there will be at some point, but we didn't get there. So, that being said, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We probably won't be seeing Scrutinized again for some time. If you do want to see more of this, especially as, like, a, a bonus Halloween week episode on the channel, please let me know down in the comments section below. Because uh, this game scares the crap out of me, but... You know, maybe you all enjoy watching me get this crap scared out of me. So, that being said, 
But that's all the time I have for today's episode. If you enjoyed this video today, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, get subscribed. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought about my gameplay, my commentary, or anything else in general. That being said, thanks for watching, and as usual, I'll catch you all on the flip side.